Hi. So, a couple of days ago, I recorded a video about my miscarriage story, and I tried to give some tips, um, some advice on how I maneuvered through it. And I watched it to see if I liked it, and I realized that it's bullshit. <laughs> um, don't get me wrong, the actual tips that I was giving are real tips and, and they can be applied to any type of loss, any type of grieving that you're going through. But what I was saying about me and how I got through it is bullshit. So I'm making this video to be a little bit more honest about what I go through. So I had my miscarriage in October of 2019. And prior to that, I had trouble getting pregnant. Um, and for a while, I was going back and forth to doctors and I was getting tests and sonograms and this, this and that. And this is covered by my insurance, but this isn't. So now I got to come out of pocket for this. And I was doing a whole bunch of stuff for about two years. And then I found out I was pregnant. Best day of my life. I was so happy, but I was so stressed at the same time. And then, boom, maybe almost two weeks after I found out I was pregnant, I was in the hospital because I woke up. And it felt like I had my period and I knew that that wasn't what it was supposed to feel like. Um, so I went to the hospital, stayed in the hospital all night with Perry and then bam, found out that I lost my child. Granted, <laughs> when I found out I was pregnant, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I was not really sure if that's what was best for me. Um, given my situation and I, I don't know if I don't want to get too much into that, but my situation was not conducive to having a baby. So I didn't know how I felt about that, but <laughs> nonetheless, I had the miscarriage and maybe two days after I was given the clear, um, I went back to work and I tried to cope as fast as I could and I couldn't. <laughs> so in the other video that I made that I was going to put out originally, I was just talking about all of the ways that I tried to get past it. But I'm about to give you the real shit on what I went through and what you should watch out for. So when I had the miscarriage, two days after I had the miscarriage, I went back to my GYN, I got a blood test and I had to go back the next week to get another blood test. But when I got that first one, um, I sat in the office, he told me his little housekeeping stuff. And then he was like, you know, you should pray. And I think he told me that I should see somebody too. And this is when I realized that the I'm not, I'm not shitting on anybody who has seen a therapist in their life. I have seen therapists, whatever. I'm not trying to shit on it, but I think that these niggas are really just meant to take your money. And like I said, I'm not shitting on it. I mean, for some people, it works. For some people, it helps. For me, that shit was a waste of my money and it was a waste of my time. And my insurance paid for some therapy and then I I didn't I wasn't feeling that so I went to somebody that I was paying out of pocket for. In both cases I just did not feel like it was doing what it was supposed to do for me. Some people say that they see results of therapy within a year or two. For me, I'm not that type of person. I feel like if I'm gonna do something, I'm giving it a couple of months and if it doesn't work, then that means it's not meant for me, right? Whoever it's meant for, it's meant for you. That's just not meant for me. So I tried to do things on my own to cope with it. And I did not do a good job. <laughs> I did not do a good job. Um, anybody who knows me knows that I really try to handle shit. 
I try to handle shit. And I wasn't always like that, but the older I got and the less I was able to rely on my family, the less I was able to rely on my family, I had to do shit myself, right? And it got harder and harder, but I kept doing it, right? When it came to this, I did not lean on anybody for this. Nobody. I leaned on my fucking self. And that is my number one advice, my real shit advice, because in the other video, I did not talk about this. The number one piece of advice that I can give to you, talk to somebody. And I mean, somebody who is going to listen to you wholeheartedly, not try to shove unsolicited advice down your throat. Somebody who's not going to judge you. Talk to somebody. I kept that shit to myself. And I think that me posting this is going to be a shock to some people that I went through that. I mean, unless, of course, my mother already ran her mouth <laughs> to you or somebody that you talk to as far as family goes. But, you know, talk to somebody. I didn't talk to anybody. I had Perry, but I, I, just, I wasn't really speaking to him. And sometimes... You know when somebody is the right person for you to be talking to. And I just did not feel like he was the right person. I mean, we had spoken about it, obviously. He was in the hospital with me and everything. But I, it just didn't feel right. Like, after a while, talking to him didn't feel right. So that's my number one piece of advice. Fucking open your mouth and talk to somebody. Because if you don't, it's going to be bottled up inside. And that's what happened with me. And not only did I not speak to anybody, but I immediately tried to jump back into life. I tried to jump back into going out. I tried to jump back into, and I mean going out, out. Like if you've ever been out with me, like I go out, like I, I go out, I drink, I have fun. I will be out all night. I tried to jump back into that. I jumped back into work, which at the time I was working a very stressful job in social services. I'm in public relations now, so it's not as bad. But social services, it was terrible. Like, a bunch of people coming to me with their shit. And I was just like, well, fuck you and your food stamps. Like, I, like I, I couldn't. I could not fathom it. So that's my number two piece of advice. My second piece of advice. Take it easy. If you're in a position where you, you can't, like, just take off a week or two from work, that's understandable. But know your limits. Know your boundaries. Understand what you need for yourself. Because I did not. I was just like, I'm just going to do everything. You cannot. You cannot. And it didn't help me. It didn't even help me numb anything, to be honest. Number three. Stop blaming yourself. It is not your fault. <laughs> it is not your fault. If you're watching this and you've had a miscarriage or stillbirth or you know somebody who has, let yourself or let that person know that it is not their fault. I blame myself for this shit up until like a month ago. You hear that? Like it took a year and a month for me to finally say, okay, this was not my fault. It's not your fault. And when you blame yourself for something like this, like that, it, it just hits deep. Like, it's not your fault. Stop blaming yourself. Miscarriages and stillbirths. Sorry, I'm trying to keep track of time. Miscarriages and stillbirths happen for a bunch of different reasons. It's not your fault. Okay? Unless you were openly doing heroin, shooting that shit up your arm with a bottle of vodka in your hand, then it is not your fault. And even then, like, honestly, people do that and then go on to have healthy babies, to be real. So stop blaming yourself. That shit's not your fault. And like I said, I just recently stopped blaming myself for this, like, and I'm still suffering through it. You know, to be real, I go in and out of social media because, well, I have a life. <laughs> like, I mean, I, you know, this is some people's lives. But, like, for me, you know, I'm working. I'm trying to do other things with myself, trying to build that wealth. But, yeah, no. Like, 
this shit is sad. I'd be sitting in the house crying, like, you know, I'm home by myself most of the time, so I'm crying a lot. And I'm trying to be real, like, my eyes are kind of puffy right now, because today was just not a good day. Like, if you saw me a few months ago and I got this tattoo, oop, it's at a weird angle. Well, listen, the tattoo represents miscarriage awareness, because in reality, I don't, I don't really think people are aware of this. Like, I know people know that it happens, but you got to understand, like, it, it goes deeper than just, oh, I lost my baby. Like, it goes deeper than that. So much happens. Like, don't try to carry this yourself, you know? If you're going through this, don't try and carry it yourself because I'm, I'm still suffering with it. Like, I have to push myself to get out of bed some days. So I want to speak to somebody out there who's having the same issue, like, you got to get up. You have to get up. You have to. You can't sit in that dark place. Like, I still feel like I'm in that dark place still. And like, you know, before the miscarriage, I was just going through shit, like just going through it. Just like I'm going through this. OK, so now I'm going through this. OK, so what about this now? OK, so problem, 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 problem. And it's like I couldn't I can't keep up. But listen, you can't sit with that. You cannot sit with that. You have to get up. You have to get out of the bed. Like, I think I'm talking more to myself right now, but you have to get up. You have to take yourself out of that. Like, it's no reason why you should keep yourself in such a dark place. Well, I don't know. This shit is about to be 12 minutes. <sighs> Sometimes I have to remind myself how beautiful I am, like, and not even in a conceited way. Like, this shit broke me. I felt like I was, like, defective or something. Like, for the longest time, I haven't looked at myself. Like, this is me. This is what I look like. Y'all remember when I used to do duck faces in every single picture? I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Well, I probably do. I don't know. But listen, you got to get up. You have to get up because nobody can do that shit for you. Anyways, I have to get up because I'm laying on my couch right now. I have to get up. So peace out.